My name is Jazzy and welcome back to Latinas in Media. Now if you don't know, it's a series where I talk about Latina characters in media. So pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. Today I want to talk about a Latina character from one of my favorite comfort TV shows, Gilmore Girls. If you're, on the road. If you're somehow unfamiliar with this show, it's about a mother and daughter named Lorelai and Rory Gilmore. Lorelai was a teen mother who left her wealthy family to raise her daughter Rory in the town of Stars Hollow. While the show primarily focuses on Lorelai and Rory's relationship, there is also some focus to the people or townies who live in Stars Hollow. Even if you're not a fan of either of the Gilmore Girls, chances are you're a fan of one of the townies who live in Stars Hollow. Today I want to talk about one of my favorite townies, the one, the only, Patricia LaCosta, or Miss Patty. Buckle up on Patty. I'm Patricia LaCosta. We just love your daughter and granddaughter. Just a warning, there might be some slight spoilers, just because I'm going to be talking about Miss Patty's role throughout the show. Now, Miss Patty was a reoccurring character throughout the entire show, and she was played by Liz Torres. Now, Liz Torres has had a long career as a comedian, singer, actress, and dancer. She's of Puerto Rican descent and was born in the Bronx. She got her start performing stand-up on The Tonight Show. Now, if you don't recognize Liz Torres by name, chances are, though, you have seen her on TV. Aside from Gilmore Girls, she's probably best well known for playing the role of Teresa for a season on All of the Family. She played a nurse who was a boarder of the bunkers. Funnily enough, that's where she met her future Gilmore Girls co-star, Sally Struthers. This prior relationship most likely helped make Patty and Babette's dynamic on the show feel more authentic. Miss Patty is the town's ballet teacher, and she owns the dance studio, which is where the town meetings are held, which is a staple of the show. The town meeting scenes are some of the funniest moments on the show, and it's really where a lot of the townies get their moment to shine. Could this meeting be any more disrupted? I could do a soft shoe. Yeah, well, I pound out a beat on the bongos. Ooh, that sounds like fun. I got bongos in the back. Miss Patty is usually helping Taylor Dozy, the town busybody, I mean, Blackman, run the meetings, so she does hold some power in the town. Right now, the last order of business is a matter relating personally to me, therefore I'm going to give Miss Patty my gavel. Again, dirty. Stop that. We get an idea of this before we even get to see Miss Patty on screen. In the pilot episode, after Rory meets Dean, her future boyfriend, Rory takes Dean to go see Miss Patty so she can help him find a job. She explains it's because Miss Patty usually knows what's going on in town, and we'll know if someone is hiring. Well, she just kind of knows everything that's going on in town. She'll know if someone's looking. Patty tends to have a reputation as a gossip along with Babette. Nobody knows. What? I swear. How do you know? Well, I walked by Hello Magazine this morning. They mentioned nothing. Well, maybe they're just trying to be, I don't know, respectful okay. about it. Babette? Miss Patty? Well, maybe they're trying not to embarrass you. Babette? Miss Patty? Well, maybe... I'm out. Does anyone mention it to you? No, but seriously, who's going to mention it to me? Babette? Miss Patty? Patty and Babette tend to have a lot of scenes together, usually gossiping or wisecracking with one another. Their scenes together are also some of the best and iconic. <laughs> oh, Patty! Did I tell you about Tilly's new facelift? Scotch tape! <laughs> you know how some women will post memes on Instagram like, me and my bestie in 50 years? they're usually thinking of someone like Patty and Babette. According to Liz Torres, her dynamic with Sally Struthers was also pretty similar behind the scenes, and they would often crack jokes and make each other laugh along with some of the cast while shooting. So I was a little more respectful, but Sally, I mean, it was like we hadn't, we just picked up where we left off 30 years ago. Because you met on All in the Family. Yeah. And then did you guys stay in touch in between? Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. And, uh, and then there we were on another show, and we had so much to catch up on, and we, we would talk, 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 yap, 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 and, and the, the poor AD, I felt so sorry for him, he would stand in front of us, and he would yell, quiet! <laughs> you know, and, and Sally and I would look at each other, and another thing, you know what that son of a gun did? <laughs> and we would continue where we left off, um, not sotto voce, <laughs> we'd shut up when somebody was acting, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> that was about it. Patty's relationship with the titular Gilmore Girls is a sweet one. She often plays a maternal role for Rory and Lorelai. Rory! Hello! It's sometimes mentioned how Patty used to teach Rory how to dance uh, before Rory realized that dancing wasn't her calling. Even though Rory doesn't think she was a good dancer, Patty still speaks favorably of her. Well, I'm still crushed beyond belief that she quit her ballet lessons. Oh, not me. Miss Perfect Work Ethic would prance around this room 24 hours a day. And I still stunk. I can vouch for that. That's not true. She was pretty bad. No, don't you listen to them. You had a true gift. It's clear she adores both girls and often remarks on their beauty. In one episode, it's revealed that Patty actually carries around a picture of Lorelai to show to men that she wants to set her up with. God. I'd like to have a visual aid to help me with a wonderful build-up I give you. Patty, I appreciate the gesture, but I don't need you to try to set me up. You're such a beautiful girl, and you deserve a nice guy. I'll have a nice guy, but let me find him, okay? But you're no good at finding him. Patty! While it's definitely meddlesome, it's clear that she does it out of love. It's kind of like a nosy Thea that doesn't respect boundaries. She also looks out for Lorelai a few times. Hence, when she and Babette decide not to gossip about Luke and Lorelai's new relationship revealed in the fifth season. Oh, more sugar. So, Samson and Delilah Saperstein got back together. I'm not surprised those two belong together. Well, it's nice that they made up. That means they're bound to have one of their fabulous fights very soon, which we need because things are slow around here. <laughs> I hear that. And in the fifth season, when Lorelai gives a drunken toast at a wedding, talking about how frustrated she is that her and Luke's wedding keeps getting pushed back, Patty decides to spread a fake story around town how Lorelai actually got up on stage and started drunkenly singing instead. This prevents Luke from finding out what happened. Okay, I've already gotten to the whole town and they're all telling the endless love story he'll never know. Oh, thanks. I owe you, Patty. Oh, honey, please. I've given more drunken toasts than Colin Farrell. <laughs> you owe me nothing. Thanks, Patty. But, Luke... It may take a mule team, but you're getting him to the altar someday. Yeah, someday. There are often references to Patty's past as a performer. She often names drops older celebrities and even claims that she's hooked up with some. According to Patty, her first start in show business was in an off-Broadway play in Cleveland. Her background is pretty similar to Liz Torres' background, although Patty's leaned more towards theater than comedy. It's not really clear if most of what she says about her past is true, since some of it doesn't exactly line up with her starting her ballet studio in Stars Hollow. In a season five episode, she tells Lorelai that she's celebrating her 40th anniversary in this business we call show. Oh, listen, I want to invite you to my anniversary party. Absolutely. Which husband? Oh, no husband, honey. I'm talking about a lover that's been much more loyal and seductive than a husband. I'm talking about that business we call show. Ah! 40 years. Then, in a season six episode, she holds her 28th annual dance recital for her ballet classes. Welcome, everybody, to the 28th annual Miss Patty School Grand Recital. <laughs> Thank you. This would mean she spent at least 12 years outside of Stars Hollow to have done everything in show business aside from setting the fire to the hoop that the dog jumps through. As Rory says. Are all these women really Miss Patty? Yep. She says she's done everything there is to do in show business except set fire to the hoop the dog jumps through. Now it's not impossible, but very unlikely, considering all the different celebrities she name drops throughout the show. Do you know that I once met the great Betty Davis? I was a chorus girl and a bus and truck tour of Guys and Dolls. Bean Town, I love that town. And there I was, me and the girls backstage after the show, and in she comes. And who did she walk right up to? But little old me. And she sized me up, exhaled some smoke from that regal mouth of hers, and said, Duh! You don't got the high notes, but you sure got the gams. I was Ricardo Montalban's receptionist for six months, and he never complained. Who? Don't make me hit you. I personally like to think that in the creator, Amy Sherman Palladino's mind, that everything Patty says about her past is true. And I'm okay with that. Now, Miss Patty is one of the few 
older examples of the spicy Latina trope. If you're not familiar with the trope, it's a Latina who is primarily characterized by her fiery personality and sexuality. My main problem with the trope is how often it's used to characterize Latina characters. However, it's usually used with younger Latinas who tend to fit more of Hollywood's standard of beauty. Latinas who are older and full-figured don't typically get to flaunt their sexuality. They're usually relegated to playing abuelas or housekeepers with maybe a few lines of broken English. Lucy, you know I don't speak Mexican. I'm not a Mexican. So a character like Miss Patty is actually pretty unique. Miss Patty has no problems flirting with men and referencing her sex life. My god, you're a tall specimen of a man. Must be all that good air in Hartford. <laughs> Try a plum, they're better than sex. Uh, enjoy. Oh, I always do. <laughs> ah. I'm so glad I had all that sex. She's mentioned being married four times twice to the same man. Oh no, Patty, you don't actually need another husband. Well, need, no, but want, that's a different story. Now you could argue that some of Patty's flirting is bordering on predatory. Mostly her flirting towards younger men like Dean when he was a teenager. Dino, Dino, Dino. You grow any taller, I'm gonna have to get myself some mountain climbing equipment. You're getting dangerous to even walk near, you know that, Patty. I've been told. Andrea Francis from Cheat Cheat Showbiz wrote an article about Patty's behavior on the show and said, in 2000, her behavior was largely considered playful, but much of what she said and did could be labeled harassment. While Miss Patty remains a beloved character on Gilmore Girls, we must admit that some of the character traits that made her such an interesting addition to Stars Hollow can certainly be considered problematic. While I understand the concern. I think a lot of Patty's flirting is pretty mild. Also, most of the men she hits on are never super uncomfortable, at least not visibly. They're more bemused than anything else. Christopher, we're all like Rory's parents around here and I'm one of her mothers. <laughs> and since you're her father, well, that would make us a couple. <laughs> couple of what? I don't know. <laughs> okay. The exception to this would probably be in one episode when she does it to Luke, but that was really more to distract him for Lorelai. Have you ever thought of taking dance? Me, no. Well, maybe you might want to think about it. There's nothing sexier than a man in tights. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that's true. Look, can you just tell Lorelai I came by? Oh, of course I will, hon. There's also a scene in season one where she's teaching two couples how to dance for their upcoming wedding, and then she grabs one of the grooms in order to give him some hands-on help. Darling, let me show you how it's done. Again? Oh. Oh. You know, in some countries, if you dance this close, you're cheating on your wife. Overall, I do think it is a valid point to make, and I would love to hear your thoughts if you think Patty's behavior is too predatory or too much. Now I want to take a moment to talk about two actresses on the show who are Latina, even though the characters aren't. First, I want to talk about Rose Abdu, who plays the town's mechanic. I've ever seen. You've missed something. I insist that you go over this entire car again. But I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with this car. I am paying you for a service. I would like that service performed. Okay, I look again. Unfortunately, this is where it kind of gets awkward because her character's name happens to be a slur against Romani people. Um, it's one that starts with a G and ends in a Y. To be fair, not a lot of people know this, and I'm assuming that ASP didn't either. Either way, I don't feel comfortable saying it in this video. If you have an issue with that, you know, take it up in the comments. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about Rose Abdu really quick because even though her character is not explicitly said to be Latina, she is of Dominican descent. She's performed at several improv theaters in Chicago, including Second City, which is also where fellow Gilmore Girls fan Fat Sajak also studied. She's doing a deep dive on Gilmore Girls and just did the first season, so be sure to check that out. Rose Abdu has been in several movies, including The 40-Year-Old Virgin and Barb and Star Go to Vista Del Mar. She has even more TV credits and has been on shows like That's a Raven, Monk, and most recently, Hacks. I think most people my age would probably recognize her most from that's a Raven playing Senorita Rodriguez, the Spanish teacher. She'll do it? No. She often plays characters of different ethnicities, but usually Latinas. 
This is most likely due to her Dominican and Lebanese background. Every time I see her on TV, I usually get excited because she's usually so funny, but especially on Gilmore Girls. Her character has some of the most memorable lines on the show, and a lot of it has to do with her delivery. It's my home. Put them back. You want to kill the little romping bambies? How can a stupid donut be happy? I also wanted to talk a bit about Alexis Bedell, who plays Rory, because not a lot of people know this, but she's also Latina. She's of Argentinian descent on her father's side, and her mother was raised in Mexico. Since Bedell grew up in a Spanish-speaking home, Spanish is actually her first language, and she didn't learn English until it was time for her to start school. One episode in season six actually has Rory speaking Spanish to one of Emily's maids. It's actually pretty funny watching the scene knowing Bladell is fluent while her character is supposed to be a novice. Hablas español. Um, no lo hablo bien y no lo hablo mucho. Lo hablas muy bien. I think I first found out that Bladell was Latina when I was reading an article from the magazine Girls Life uh, when they were interviewing her along with everyone else in the cast of The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. America Ferreira, who played Carmen in the movie, was actually surprised when she found out that Bedell spoke Spanish. However, they quickly bonded after that and would often speak Spanish to one another on set. Now granted, this is actually just coming from my mind, so I don't have the actual article and I really couldn't find it online, so you're just gonna have to trust me on this. Even though Alexis gets a lot of shit for her acting on the show, I do think she was the best fit play Rory. And I think she nailed the character from the get-go. I also think she did a good job showing the evolution of Rory's character throughout the show. Although some may argue it's more of a de-evolution, but I mostly blame that on the writing. Sorry, Amy. What I'm trying to say is I don't think anyone else could have played Rory better. Well, I had fun talking about Miss Patty and Gilmore Girls. I love the world of Gilmore Girls and the people who inhabit it. Please let me know if you're a fan of Gilmore Girls and a fan of Miss Patty. Also, let me know if you have any other townies that you're a fan of. Let me know who your favorite character is. Let me know if you hate Logan as much as I do. I always appreciate Logan slander. So be sure to leave that in the comments and also be sure to like and subscribe. Bye.